It's the nation's favourite antiques expert. All right, fair enough. It's a really cute subject. Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> Make it so. Here we go. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Frankly terrifying. <laughs> The aim Ooh. to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. I've lost money. There'll be worthy winners. <laughs> Get in there! And valiant losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Ooh. Or the slow road oh. to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> what fun. Salutations, Somerset. <laughs> Underway. Driding through the countryside in the glitzy 70s Alfa Romeo Spider is auctioneer Izzy Balmer. I love driving the car. It is an absolute beauty. Very much a feeling of being alone and being alive. And someone embracing the good old British countryside is hot shot auctioneer Catherine Southern. Ah! <laughs> I cannot believe that it's almost the end of our road trip. Izzy and I have had so much fun. It's been such a giggle. Yeah, you're telling me. Last time, despite Izzy's monster profits... And we all done and finished at 160. Yeah! <laughs> Catherine's still holding on to her mighty lead. We're going to sell at 200. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that's wonderful. One thing is sure, I have to change this footwear. This is not, not working. Izzy begins this final instalment with a piggy bank clinking with 289 pounds and eight pence. Catherine's piggy is even more well fed with an impressive 496 pounds and 86 pennies. I have to say, even when Izzy hasn't made big profit, she's just been incredibly gracious and just accepted it and just moved on. And I think sometimes in life, you've just got to take a risk. It's YOLO. You only live once. And before we get any FOMO, you speak for fear of missing out. Izzy and Catherine began this adventure back in Storrington. Skipped along the Devon and Cornish coast, now they're taking in Somerset, before everything concludes in the fair city of Bristol. This is a great sight. <laughs> Catherine, this is why were you planning on stopping? Were you aiming for this Don't corner? <laughs> dear, oh dear. Have you any idea how hard it is to cycle in these? <laughs> well, they look very stylish, Catherine. <laughs> you are doing so well oh, with all your it. money. <laughs> it's not the end yet. We've still got a few more items to buy, and I think today we're going to find some really special things. Really special. On that note, come on. I'm going to get, get in the car and go buy some antiques. Let's bust out of here. Go on. Go on! Oh dear. And have a go at making some moolah, eh? I'm coming right behind you. You can certainly see a lot more on the bike and take in the beautiful landscape, but my God, is it hard work. I'm the number two. I'm hunting down the number one. And I'm going to overtake her against all odds. Someone's defo had their porridge. Today, Izzy and Catherine are on a shopping extravaganza for an auction in Nottingham. First, we blast off with Izzy in the town of Crewkern. Famed for cloth making in the 18th and 19th centuries, even making sails for the Royal Navy, which I don't think we'll find in here, but who knows? Looks quaint. This emporium has been on the go for the last six years and it is crammed to the max with all sorts. How cute are these? At first glance, I presumed that these were ebony bases, vulcanite. So vulcanite is vulcanised rubber, ever so popular in the Victorian period, mass produced often used in jewellery because it's quite a good jet simulant. Jet is fossilised wood found in coal deposits. 
and vulcanised rubber was the cheaper alternative. Today it doesn't really cut the mustard. Much better off going for the real McCoy, whoever he was. It's my last chance, my last chance to try and catch Catherine up. I think I might be shooting myself in the foot if I was to get these. <laughs> On that painful note, let's pause du, 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 du. and locate the off-the-saddle Catherine. It's only a slight tail, but it's quite hard in wellies. Yeah, Moaning Minnie is in the next-door county of Devon, en route to Ottery St Mary. Sounds like somewhere Miss Marple might live. Very nice. The vintage trading post has a sprawling metropolis of goodies on offer. Just look at that Cadillac. Hope she doesn't buy that. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness me. What on earth is that? That is not something I want to see when I turn up at an antique centre. Well, I never. <laughs> Let's get to work. It's fit to burst with retro and vintage in here. Gosh. This could be the moment where everything goes wrong. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Help. Is Mrs Moneybags crumbling under last leg pressure? Ah. This is probably the oldest thing in the shop so far. I actually called temple spectacles. Temple because they go on your temples and they're not sort of shaped in the way that traditional glasses are. They literally go across like this. They look tiny. I don't think this case necessarily goes with it. I mean, it could well be later. But they've got this right in, in what they've called this, which is a frog mouth case, which is wonderful because of the way that it opens. I love that. And actually, you know what? I like the case more than the spectacles. I'm not that excited by them. I, I think I picked them up just because of the age, just because they've got some antique value and I can kind of relate to them. Not that I'm an antique. I didn't say a word, Catherine. <laughs> They're £25. Meanwhile, over in Somerset, with the Queen of Bling... Yes, it's a brooch. Yes, it's a bit bent. But that is the important bit. Miriam Haskell. She was an American jewellery designer, costume jewellery. Uh, she was born at the very end of the 19th century. And Miriam Haskell's jewellery is very, very collectible. It's so rare to find a Miriam Haskell. You just don't see it. Let's find Jo, the lady in charge. I have found, would you believe it, a brooch. No. I know. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Yeah. It's a nice one, though, isn't it? <laughs> Where's well, Miriam Haskell? How could I leave it behind? You can't. You, you can't. just don't see Miriam Haskell. Jo, it hasn't got a price on it. No. So I'm going to make you an offer. OK. I'd love to pay you £20 for it. 25 I am not going to haggle over five pounds. OK. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Our jewellery connoisseur has stayed true to her expertise. A bit of bling bling to add to her collection. Over in Devon, Catherine's decided she really does like the look of the Georgian specs after all. People do collect spectacles. I want sort of a massive collection of a huge variety of spectacles and they did sell very well. So I think for £25 they're really probably quite a bargain and I could make some money on them. Yeah, that's the name of the game. Let's find dealer Vanessa. I just found these spectacles and I think they're probably one of the oldest things that I found today. I'm not sure that they're the original case. Do you get people buying spectacles? We here? do actually, yeah, they do sell. But it's actually a really good price, really. Yeah, I think it's not case. it's not bad, is it? So I'm gonna give you some money. Ten, twenty, and five. Lovely. Thanks Thank very you much. Bye bye, Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Last of the big spenders, eh, Catherine? Right, off we go. Where is our intrepid trekker, Izzy? I mean, it's just such a treat to get to drive a beautiful, stunning car like this. I have no plans to give this car back to Catherine anytime soon. Izzy is cantering towards an undisclosed location deep in the wilds of Devon. 
Izzy is sworn to secrecy about the exact location. For the last seven years, a community has been hiding here. An ecologist, Jake Cant, knows their secret, and he's going to share it with Izzy. Hi, Jake. Hi. Why have you suggested that we meet here? Well, we've got a family of beavers that live here that have built a, a beaver dam on a small stream. This once common British mammal has been absent from British rivers for 400 years. After being hunted to extinction, the furry, sharp-toothed rodent is making a comeback. Izzy is hopefully going to catch a glimpse. Ooh, look. In 2014, footage emerged of beaver kits, so that the beavers were breeding in the river. And the government got quite upset about this and actually wanted to remove the beavers. But Devon Wildlife Trust, with a group of partner organisations, managed to persuade the government to allow us to have a five-year trial to look at the impacts that beavers can have um, in England. Rewind to Stone Age Britain, when the Eurasian beaver was recognised as Neolithic man's best friend. Further back in the past and go to Somerset and the Somerset levels, uh, and there we find that Neolithic people 5,000 years ago, using beaver cut material, so trees that the beavers have failed to feed on, well, the remains of those beaver felled trees have been used to form trackways, a bit like the one we're standing on today. Obviously 5,000 years ago, a little bit different, and people only had Stone Age tools, but if people could pick up wood that's been cut by a beaver, that saves a lot of time and effort. But this furry mammal soon became highly desirable for another reason. So the last written record of beavers in England is if someone being paid a bounty for a beaver head. So somebody's bought in a dead beaver and is rewarded for that. And that's because there was an act of parliament that encouraged people to kill certain animals that were considered vermin. This made the beaver a highly prized and lucrative creature, which led to their eventual extinction in the UK. This scarcity took the hunt across the pond. There was so much demand for beaver fur, Europeans actually started to go to North America to get beaver felts. And this drove the European settlement of North America. So we colonise North America all over beaver fur? Yeah, one of the major driving factors uh, for Europeans' interest in North America was the fur trade. Um, Dutch, French and English were all super interested in getting to North America. The fur trade became so fierce here that in 1609, the Beaver Wars began. Native American tribes understood the magnitude of wealth to be made and waged a war with Europeans for close to a century. The highly prized fur kept its shape better than any other and became the perfect material for fashionable headgear from the 16th to the 18th century. A hundred years ago, there were only 1,200 beavers left in Europe. Uh, over the last 100 years, there have been lots of reintroductions. Now we think the Eurasian beaver population is around a million, so it's a really fantastic conservation success story. Since 2015, the Devon Wildlife Trust have monitored the reintroduction of these busy ecosystem engineers. I feel such a city girl. <laughs> it's like mud and nettles. This industrious mammal's building work not only protects from predators, but also allow water voles to dragonflies to thrive and prosper. At this site, we've got about 200 metres of beaver canals that the beavers have excavated, and the beaver canals link feeding areas with ponds and with their main lodge and the stream. So the beavers can access their entire territory just by swimming along the canals um, and through their own ponds. Now the bit we've been waiting for. Let's try and spot one. Right now, the beavers are probably waking up because they're nocturnal. Um, and hopefully feeling hungry, and hopefully they're going to come out soon so we can see them. I really hope so. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, fingers crossed. How many beavers are in the family that live here? So we'll have uh, the adult pair, so mum and dad, and then we'll have the kits from last summer, and then there'll be the kits from this summer. So that's probably ten beavers in this family. They might not all be in the same lodge. Well, we've got a beaver right in front of us now. And it's feeding on the branch and that's one of this year's kits. I think there's another one somewhere but... I was going to say it's smaller than I was expecting. The five-year beaver trial here has been a huge conservation triumph. The government now agree that this hard-working beaver should be allowed to stay and help the British countryside flourish. I'm going to hunker down and do some hardcore beaver watching. Mm, good luck. Thank you.
mice by another busy beaver. Who else could you go on a road trip with and talk about hair dye and high heels and just different things? Yeah, well, you've done a trip with Phil Serrell, haven't you? <laughs> Catherine has pedalled south to the lovely town of Sidmouth. The favourite spot of literary bard Sir John Betjeman. And here she comes, patrolling the pavements. To have a good old nosy in here. Jackdaws, antiques and collectibles. Very, very nice. Hello there, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank good. you, Catherine. Are you Debs or Debbie? I don't mind. Oh. I don't mind. Catherine. Lovely. Glad we cleared that up. Debs has an impressive array of stock for Catherine to spend her mighty £470 and pennies. An anchor. I've no, I, I don't know anything about this. We could say it came from something really famous. We could say it came from the victory, couldn't we? Yeah, we could, but it would be wrong. It's a titch. Ticket price is £350. Wow. What can you tell me about your anchor? It was stretched up in Weymouth and then left on the dock for many, many years. That's all I know. So you didn't pay for it? No. Oh. It was free. Oh. Yeah, okay. which so doesn't happen very often. Am I allowed to make you an offer, but it would be nowhere near what you're asking? Throw a number at me, Catherine. I would offer you £100 and that would be my bottom line. Okay. Yes, why not? Are you sure? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing now. Um, People love me. No, things are going to go well. It's going to do really well at the auction, I'm sure. Bit spontaneous, that. But it hasn't put her off looking for more. They're only metal, they're not silver. But I think they're shoe buckles. And I don't know how old they are. But as a piece of history, and people do collect weird and wonderful things like these. These are made of cut steel. And all forms of shoe decoration were popular over a 200-year period. In fact, no self-respecting Georgian dandy would leave the house without them. Right, I'm going to buy these, okay, if wonderful. that's OK. That's They've got £18 on them, which I think is a fair price. OK, So good. I'll buy those and Thank your you. anchor, is that OK? OK, wonderful. Thank so you. So that's £118. Well, thank you so much would for you? those. I could put those in a little paper bag for you. You can gift wrap the anchor for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's a step too far. £100 them for the anchor and £18 for the Georgian shoe buckles. I've actually finished a little bit early, so I might go and see what Izzy's up to. I've got to try and find it first. Izzy is still on Beaver Watch. Izzy! <gasps> I've been cycling and walking for miles to find you. What are you doing? I'm looking for beavers, but we have to be really quiet because there are two baby ones out. Oh. They're having their tea. Or maybe it's their breakfast, they've just woken up so they're having their breakfast. You've learnt a lot, haven't well, you? I think I might be a bit better at beavers than antiques. Oh, <gasps> Catherine, Catherine, look, look, can you see it there? Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. Right, come on then, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you have no stamina with this, Catherine. Good night, Mr Beaver. <laughs> oh, wait for me. And now that our explorers have spotted this little cutie, we must bid them farewell. Nighty night. Rise and shine. Onwards we go with our road trip darlings. I'm so sad that it's my last day of the road trip with Catherine. I really ought to have a plan to get myself in the right mindset for today, but all I can think of is how sad I am that it's the very last day. You'll make me sad too. When you're by the sea, this bike is not too bad. You know what, Izzy, after all? I think I've got the better deal. Ta -ra. Well, she's not too bothered. A breakfast beach date beckons. Catherine, this is a gorgeous spot. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Breakfast. Well, Ooh. How did you get on yesterday? I've actually bought something really out of character. So I think you're going to be really surprised. Very good. Um, so what I've bought is... I bought a brooch. Oh, not another brooch. <laughs> I bought a brooch. Oh, is he? I Do it. you never learn? I tried so hard not to. 
This blingy brooch leaves Izzy with two hundred and sixty-four pounds and pennies. Who'd have got it? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Catherine has three hundred and fifty-six pounds and eighty-six pence left. She dropped her dosh on the dainty Georgian gents' shoe buckles, the Georgian spectacles, and the gargantuan anchor. I don't know anything about this. Well, I didn't buy a brooch. OK, <laughs> you do surprise me. I bought something a little bit bigger. I bought this beautiful piece of rust. Do you know, Catherine, do you know what? I saw this as I walked in and I thought, oh, it's just an on a beach and it's an anchor. I didn't realise you'd no. bought it. And I paid £100 for it, which is a lot of money. Is it? I thought anchors were quite collectible. Are they? And that one's huge. I mean, how often do you see an anchor that big? <laughs> right. Sup up. After you, my dear. Thank you very much, well, lovely. Cheers to buy. We jumpstart today's foray into shopping with a schlep to the Dorset town of Bridport. Deep in the old town's crevices lies Bridport Antiques. It's got a very impressive entrance. I like these gates. It's almost as if we're royalty. We are royalty. <laughs> Izzy has just less than £265 to spend in here. He's quite a handsome chap, isn't he? And there's hardly any colour. Well, obviously, no colour. It's a pencil sketch, except for a little tint to the cheeks and the lips there. And yet there is so much character. It's 200 years old. It probably isn't going to be cheap. But you never know. At the opposite end of the shop, that looks nice. What's that? How much is that? Well, no pride, no, no price on this one. This is my ideal purchase. I would say it's probably, let's have a look. Yeah, for cigars, a cigar box. British officers of high social position in the Georgian and Victorian eras would often carry high quality portable furniture such as this. And so the whole idea of campaign furniture is this idea of travelling with these handles recessed into the cigar box. I've got a feeling that that will probably be, I should think, about £300. Let's ask dealer Richard. Richard, can I just ask you about a cigar box for the campaign? Yep. Burr walnut. Yes. So you didn't have a price on that? No, well, I literally bought it in this morning. It was going to be about 225 Right. But because it came in with some other bits and pieces, I can actually do something quite good on that. Could you take 100 for it? Uh, yes, go on. Lovely. Well, I'll definitely have that, and I will definitely buy something else. But what that other item is, I don't know yet. Very generous of you, Richard. Is Izzy as busy? Nine carat gold ring. Label says quartz. I am wandering moonstone. And it's set in what we call a rub over or a bezel setting. It's an ancient way of setting stones. Um, I better not push it on my finger too much because it is a little small. I'm going to pop it down and just keep looking. It's a contender, even if it's priced at £85. found a brooch of a little, I think it's a schnauzer. I'm not brilliant on my dogs, although I am a dog owner. But I think that's a, a schnauzer. I quite like saying that. I might say that again, schnauzer. <laughs> it's got a good name. It's the little things, they say. And along the bottom there is a little bar. It'd be nice if they were emeralds, but they're not. It's priced at £68. I don't know, I just feel that I, I want to buy a brooch just to be the same as Izzy. Catherine's looking for dealer Richard to get his very best on the brooch. Richard, I found something else to go with the box. I've gone for a schnauzer. I did, Silver yeah. schnauzer. Do you like that? Yeah. Now, the ticket price on that is £68. What, what can you do for that, the silver? The very best, I have to say, would be 50 50. I'm sorry, but it's silver the way it is at the moment. So 150 for the two. Nice round. Is that all right? That's yep. a lovely figure. 
Richard, that's yours. It's been Thank you. delightful. Well, Enjoyed make sure it. you come back. I may well do. If, if you keep getting lovely things like this, I'll keep coming back. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thanks, and Richard. that bevy of buys signs the end of shopping for Catherine. Let's seek out Izzy. There's a set of six. A circa 1900. I think they're what we would call Austrian successionists. They look very much in the style of Coleman Moser. And he was a designer and really influential in sort of Austrian design. And he designed all sorts of things, including glass. Just looking for a price. Can't see one. This one does have a chip, so it's probably worth me inspecting all of them. I mean, from here, they all look pretty decent other than this one. There are six in total. Oh, uh, Richard! Oh, hi, Zicky. Hello. Hello. Richard, so, I found three things. However, two of them don't have prices on. Let's begin with the George III pencil sketch priced at 190. How much can this gentleman... I can let him go for 100 pounds. For 100? Yeah. OK. And the ring, priced at 85? I could do 60 on that. OK. And then also the liqueur yeah. glasses. Although they're collectible, I could let those go for 100. I need to have a think. Um, right. I think I'm going to have to sit down. I, I think I'm going to have to sit down. <laughs> um, if I took all three, would you take 200? Mm, go on. Oh, my goodness. Richard, thank you so much. £200. Thank you. No, Richard, thank, thank you. you. It has been an absolute pleasure looking around your beautiful items. Thank you. That breaks down to 80 for the sketch, 40 for the ring and £80 for the liqueur glasses. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Richard, for being so kind. Meanwhile, Catherine's happiness levels are off the chart. I feel like I've done the whole coast, actually. I feel like I've cycled from Cornwall to Dorset. She's off to the Isle of Portland, on the southernmost tip of Dorset. Joined to the mainland by the stunning Chesil Beach, it is home to Tout Quarry, one of the few remaining hand-mined quarries in the UK. In the early 1980s, it was saved from ruin by a group of artists who transformed the labyrinth of gullies here into a spectacular sculpture park. Catherine's meeting up with one of the artists who continue to preserve the quarry, Hannah Sophia. This looks amazing, this model. A commercial quarry for centuries it was the primary source of income for the families here. Over 28 generations mastered the art of quarrying this fine Portland stone. The whole island was just quarrymen and they had back-to-back -back traditions. They were also fishing. So when they didn't have quarrying time, they went fishing. So they knew about the tides, which are very powerful around mm. here. And they knew how to get the stone out in big, huge sections. Portland Stone was established as the superior stone of choice, selected by Sir Christopher Wren when he used it for St Paul's Cathedral. I'd like to know really about what was so special about Portland Stone. What were its characteristics? It's very dense. You can actually carve very fine detail and it weathers very well. And it's a brilliant white colour. The quarrymen had a special technique for quality control. So they used to ring the stone to make sure it was sound for buildings in London. So how do they really ring the stone? Well, I'll show you. Right. You, uh, pick up one of these and... And what does that tell us? That tells you it's sound. When you find a crack in a ceramic, when you're looking yeah. at an antique yeah. bowl or something, you do often tap it with your teeth just to check that it rings. I suppose it's the same sort of thing. Absolutely. That's yeah. wonderful, I like that. Hand quarrying is an ancient Egyptian way of splitting stone, still practised today with tools known as plugs and feathers. Due to mechanisation, the quarry's final contract was in 1982. This threat of the quarry being turned into a refuse tip spurred Hannah and fellow artists to save this precious site a year later. 
Regular workshops take place here. Master sculptor Paul is the man to help us with the art of stone carving. We've drawn a leaf on there, which is quite simple, but it fits the stone very well. Pick up the letter cutting chisels and then close your hand up. Yeah, that's right. These are called dummy hammers. So Dummy hammers, yeah, right? It's a question of just holding it with your thumb behind there to stop it spinning round. And it's little gentle taps. So if you have the chisel on the stone, it has to have an angle that will allow the front of the chisel to bite. Oh my goodness me, it's really difficult. You've got to have a steady hand. That's quite good, actually, if I do say so myself. With over 60 hidden sculptures in the park and new artists arriving every year, Tout Quarry continues to be honoured by the inventive brilliance of the artists who nurture this magical place. Meanwhile, what of the magical world of Izzy? This is a really weird thing to say, but this steering wheel is so tactile. It's like really slim and it just fits really nicely under the hands. It's just been such a pleasure, such an honour, such a treat to drive such a gorgeous car. The number one Alfa Romeo fan is hot-footing it to the Dorset town of Dorchester. Thomas Hardy loved it here so much that he drew inspiration from the town for the main setting in his bestseller, The Mayor of Casterbridge. The Denon Antique Centre is the final antiques pit stop for Izzy to shell out her remaining wodge, which totals just less than £65. This is your very last chance to try and overtake Ms Southern. I don't want to put my whole weight in it in case I break it. I'm just going to have to be brave and hope I don't break it. OK, there we go. Interesting way of finding motivation. It's quite cosy, actually. Just needs a few cushions. But it seems to have worked. I'm actually just checking that it is Victorian rather than repo. It's a um, ceiling light. You, you can convert it into a modern fitting and have your cable coming up the centre and your light bulb down there. I just think that's beautiful. I haven't actually dared to look at the price yet. <gasps> OK, I mean, I don't even have that much money left, so... It's priced at 75 smackers. Let's get John, the man in charge, over. John, I have found what I think is a beautiful ceiling light. However, there are a fair few cobwebs inside there, which tells me this has been here an extremely long time. So I was wondering if I could make you a cheeky offer. You could try, yeah. Oh, gosh, OK, I don't know how cheeky to go now, then. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go very cheeky, then. Can I offer you, please, £20? Make it 25. I would love to see this being returned to its former glory. So, yes, please, I would love to give you 25 for it. Let's pop it down there so I don't damage it. There we go. Oh, thank 25. you. 25. No, thank you. You've been extremely generous. Thank you so much. Had a lovely yeah. time. OK. Thank see you. you. Have a good yeah, day. And you. Bye thank bye. You. Bye bye. A generous discount for Izzy's last buy of her road trip adventure. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, John. <laughs> My goodness, has it been a wonderful trip or what? I have had such a blast with Catherine this week. It has been so much fun. We've had such a giggle. We've had some highs and some lows, but far more importantly than that, I have made a friend for life in Catherine. The shopping curtains have now closed. Time for some shut-eye. Stunning Clifton Suspension Bridge is the spectacular backdrop for this exciting conclusion to the trip. <laughs> Hello! Oh, thank you. Well, you look cool in the leathers. It's got such a good look. You're rocking it. That's what you're doing. You are rocking this car. For the last auction, hurrah, the ladies have arrived in Bristol, while their antique delights have journeyed north to Nottingham in the East Midlands. Where, with uncontrollable excitement, we're gearing up for an auction showdown at Arthur Johnson & Sons. It's a closed-door sale for online, phone and absentee bidders only. Still with the absentee bid at 35. Izzy spent £250 on five auction lots. 
Philip Poyser is the gent wielding the gavel today. Any faves, Philip? The Miriam Haskell brooch, um, it's where the market is at the moment, mid 20th century fashion jewellery, sells really well. And if you've got a good name, which uh, Miriam Haskell is, I think that will go well. Catherine splurged £293, also on five lots. The cigar box is one of my favourite pieces. It's um, in lovely burr walnut. It's the sort of thing that cigar collectors will want. It's just a lovely piece, very, very well made. Shall we have a look at how well or how badly we've done at this auction? Ooh, I'm really nervous, Catherine. No, it's going to be great. Ready? Yes, ready. Let's go. Izzy's ceiling light is first to tempt the bidders. They're just so in and out of fashion, who knows? 30, 30, I've got bid at 30. Yay! 30, 30, 30. <laughs> Add 40 bid at 40. It's 40. Add 40 okay. pounds. Add 40 pounds. Look round there, nice sell. It goes done at 40. An illuminating start to proceedings. Well done, Izzy. I'm pleased with that. It made I bet you're pleased with your cheeky offer now, aren't you? So pleased. <laughs> <laughs> wish, wish I'd been a bit cheekier. <laughs> Catherine's Georgian specs and frog mouth case are next. Are the spectacles gold? Don't be silly, Izzy. <laughs> no. Ten. I've got ten already at ten. Ten bid. Twelve. Twelve bid. Twenty now. At twenty. Well, it's creeping up. Twenty bid. At twenty pounds. Being sold then. Dunk twenty pounds. In and out. 20. Donk. Well, we didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I think they should have probably made a bit more, but it's fine. But they weren't gold, Izzy. That's the thing. Bling it on with Izzy's fave, the Miriam Haskell brooch. You could wear that today, couldn't you? Yes, but I've been saying that about all the brooches I've been <laughs> buying. At uh, £30, five, thank you. £35, £35, £35. £35, Izzy, that's 40. brilliant. Uh, 40 bid, 40. I'm looking for five now. At uh, £40, bid. designer brooch, being sold, it goes done at 40 Someone else loved it too, Izzy. Great result. You believed in it, done, made a profit. Couldn't have said it better Can myself. You, Thank you, you should go into buying brooches, is he? <laughs> Another brooch, this time Catherine's little silver schnauzer. I think it's only going to make money because of its little doggy. Well, I'm excited schnauzer. to see how it does. £20 then, let's get off. 20 bid, 35 I've got. Ooh, bid, that's a nice jump. 35 35. Help yourselves here, 40. 40 bid, 50, 50 bid at 50. Oh, wow. 50 pounds. 50, yeah, 50 pounds at 50, 5, 55 bid. 60 bid at 60, 5. 65, 65 bid. Wow. At 65. 70, 70 bid at 70, at 70 bid. I sell then, it goes done, sold at 70 pounds. They like brooches here. He is rather adorable. So it just goes to show we should buy brooches. A Georgian piece of history. Izzy's framed pencil sketches next. It was sketched in 1810. I don't, you know, Catherine, there aren't going to be photos of you and me around in 200 years' time. Of course there will be. Why well, not? <laughs> Why not? Give me how much on that? 50. What did you pay? 20. 50. Oh, no! 50 pound bid at 50. Five, 55 bid. Add 55. I've got 50. Keep going, keep going. Add 55 pound bid. I'll take 60. He's dashing. Pink He's gorgeous. Done <laughs> at 55. Pity he wasn't that attractive to buyers. Is his first loss of the day. Oh, wow, well, never mind. Time for Catherine's Georgian shoe buckles. Would you have bought these? Let's see if they make a profit and then buckles might be my new thing. I'll be over Forget brooches. brooches. Get brooches. Move on buckles. I'll be all about buckles. 20, I've got 20. Thank 20. You. 20. Okay, 20. that's profit fine. straight away. Opening bid and a profit. 30, 30 bid. At 30. Well at done, you. I'm really, really happy with that. 30. Not bad for a 200 year old antique. They were lovely. They were so sweet. And I would buy those again and again. Make way for Izzy's set of six Austrian liqueur glasses. On a really good day, they will probably only make 80 at auction, but I just thought they were really beautiful. Today is a very good day, Exactly, Izzy. that's what I was hoping. <laughs> I just thought they were really lovely. Today is a brilliant day. The liqueur glasses. Sounds Ooh. good. 40, I've got 40. In the USA. Yeah, 40, oh, in 40 the USA, Izzy. 40. 50, 50 bid. I've got 50 already. Still in the United States. 55, 60. Come on, America. <laughs> they love them. Come on, America. They get there, OK. 70, 70 bid. At 70, it's a lovely set. 75. Keep going, keep going. Lovely set. 75. 
at £75 for the set of six, and it goes done, sold, I sell at £75. No! Keep going! What a bargain for such beautiful things. Do you know what? They were just really, really lovely. They were really lovely. I just really liked them. Watch out, Catherine's great big anchor is next. Taking it away from the coast, I'm not sure that was a good idea. At 40, at 40 pounds, at 40. Five, 45, 50, 50 bid, still with the absentee bid at 50. Right direction. At 50 bid at 50, 60, 70, 70 bid. Oh Five, dear, that's a 80, loss. 80 bid. No, it's still bid going. 100 pound bid at 100. 100? 100. 100. At 120 pounds. 30, 130, and it goes. Home and dry. Done at 130. Your gamble paid off, Catherine. It's not a huge profit, but that is a little profit, isn't it? But Catherine, a couple of pounds is a couple, couple of pounds. A couple of pounds is a couple of pounds, isn't it? With Catherine ahead by just a smidge, can Izzy get herself into the lead with the gold ring? I really like moonstones. I think they're a really underrated stone, personally. And you paid for 40. Izzy. So we'll see. This is your comeback. 35 bid 45. 45 bid at 45. At 45. Come on. At 50 pound bid at 50. Should be more. At 50 Should be a lot 50. more. At 55 yes. bid. 60 bid. I mean... At 65. Being sold. No, no, keep going. no, 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 no. 70. <laughs> 70 pounds. The hammer for five, 75 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. At 75, at 75 pounds. Sell at 75 pounds. The jewellery expertise is shining brightly, Izzy. Well done. But well, congratulations, because that's lovely to find something that nobody Thank else you. has seen. So. Thank you. Catherine's sumptuous cigar box is the final lot for today. Oh, I'm really, really excited to see how this does. Got a good feeling, Catherine. I'm quite excited about this one, but I don't... I really don't know, actually. I'm going straight in at 80. 80 pound bid at 80. 90. 90 bid. 100 pound bid. 110. That's it. You're in a profit. 120 bid. 130. Oh. OK. Profit. Proper profit. At 130. 140 bid at 140. At 150. 160. 160 bid. 170. Thank you. 190. Thank you again at 190. Almost doubled your money! Last call. It goes. Done at 190. Well, fine craftsmanship speaks for itself. A knockout result, Catherine. I'm so pleased it did so well for you. Thank you. Especially Thank you very it was much. your favourite. Yeah, it's nice when you have when you're attached to something. Let's do a spot of adding up. After all the brooches and after all the sale room costs, Izzy finishes this road trip with a respectable £272.78. and pence. But after that big fat profit on the cigar box, and after all auction costs, Catherine has sustained her lead and concludes this adventure as road trip champ with a rather lovely five hundred and sixty-four pounds and sixty-six pence. All profits go to children in need. What a wonderful week, eh? Girls on tour, Izzy. We've had athleticism. Oh my goodness. Brooches. You know how I like brooches. It's another Scandinavian brooch, a Victorian brooch. We've talked to the animals. How much do I have, birds? Island hopped. <laughs> and gathering riches along the way. 90 now. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll miss ya.